Hey there, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMGA Rock Guide Apprentice. And today I'm going to show you how to lower past a core shot uh, in the case that your rope gets damaged on a multi pitch or even a single pitch climb. Uh, first thing you want to do uh, if you suspect a core shot is you want to isolate it in the rope. So if my core shot is right here where I bend the rope and it bends all the way down and doesn't return or pop back to normal, I want to go ahead and completely isolate it from getting weighted with an overhand on a bite. And that's going to keep it, uh, no matter what I do, uh, from being isolated. But now the problem is I have this wide spot in the rope line, and that's not going to fit through a gree, -gree uh, or any kind of lowering device. So I'm going to show you uh, how to do that. Um, obviously, I could be belaying on any type of device. Uh, I chose to do a gree, gree in this case just because it's the easiest to show you. Uh, but uh, you can use some of the other techniques I showed in some of my previous videos if you're using a different device. So I will go ahead and uh, lower uh, with my gree, gree I'll do a redirect first, all the way up to the core shot. <clears throat> okay, so I'll lower my climber. And here comes the core shot. And we'll kind of stop there. Okay, now I can actually go hands-free here because I have my knot uh, in the line. So I can go ahead and uh, take my hand off the rope. There's only less than a foot of slack between the knot and the gree, -gree. And I want to go ahead and build my next lowering system. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to lower on a munter the rest of the way. Uh, you could do, uh, if you had another belay device or something like that and wanted to use that, that would be an option. Uh, but I like to do a munter here because I can go ahead and lock it off and transfer the weight. So I'm going to I have my munter set, but I'm going to do a munter mule overhand while I transfer my weight. So I got my new system built now, and it's backed up, locked. And you want to look at this distance between the gree, gree and the next system I'm going to. I got maybe a foot of slack here. You don't want a lot of slack because you'll see in just a second as I transfer off my uh, weight transfer device or ratchet, uh, I could run out of line or the ratchet could be too far where I can't retrieve it. So the next thing I want to do is build a ratchet, uh, which is basically a climb heist on one end or some type of friction hitch and an MMO on the other. So I'm going to do a climb heist. And in this case, you want to do it close to the belay device you're coming off of. Okay. Cause I want to be able to use as much line as I can between this and the MMO uh, to transfer the weight onto my new system. So now I'll do a MMO here. Okay, and that's tight. And like you've seen in some of my other videos, uh, I actually don't have to do the overhand. I can just pass the tail through the loop. That's acceptable. And so now I have my weight transfer ratchet. I have my old system, the Gree, Gree and I have my new system, which is the MMO currently, will eventually be a munter. So I can go ahead and release some slack into the system through the Gree, Gree to unweight it and take it out. And you see that it's important to have some slack in that system, even though we want to minimize distance or else you can't get your device out. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is go ahead and release the Munter Mule ratchet. And I can lower. And now you see why I wanted to be mindful of this distance. If this was a lot of distance, this climb heist could get away from me. But you can see here, I have enough material uh, in uh, this little cordelette to lower onto the new system. And I can pull that out. And I'll leave that there for now. 
And now I have my new system that I'm going to lower on. But before I lower on a munter, I need to back it up. In this case with a third hand. And I will do an auto block. All right, that's good, that's binding. And I can go ahead and release this. And you can see I got my core shot on the other side of the system now. You can see also why I wanted to have that overhand so that the core shot's not loaded because now, now I'm loaded here between me and my climber. I'll go ahead and try to mute this pop if I can, okay. And lower to my third hand. And now I can continue lowering. Cool. Hey, I hope you found that video useful on lowering past a core shot or a not pass. I will probably do another video on how to lower past the core shot when you're rappelling uh, to follow your climber, uh, but you can definitely use this in a scenario where applicable. Hey, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and uh, tune in to the next rescue series video. We'll catch you out on the crag.